Hello students, today we are continuing with bacterial and viral diseases in the chapter Human Health and Disease. Human Health and Disease. In the last time, I have explained about typhoid and I told that. Uh, what is the causative agent for typhoid? What are the symptoms? Which is the test used to detect the typhoid? And uh, one more point is uh, need to be explained in typhoid is about the curious uh, case of uh, Mary. Hello. Mary Mellon is the name of a cook. So Mary Mellon is the name of a cook and uh, she was famously known as being carrier of typhoid. So what you should know that she is carrier of typhoid. Now, who is a carrier? Generally, it doesn't mean carriers are there only for typhoid. Most of the diseases uh, may have carriers. Now, who are carriers? Now, carriers are those individuals who will not exhibit the symptoms of diseases, and usually they are not affected by the disease but they carry the pathogens in their body and have a risk of spreading it. So such type of individuals are called as carriers. So one of the typhoid carrier, her name was Mary Mellon. She is also famously called as Typhoid Mary. So Mary Mellon actually migrated to USA from Europe and uh, her favorite job was cooking. And therefore, she used to search for affluent families, that is, rich families, so that she can work as a cook in their families. So she continued to work as a cook, but what happened is she being a carrier of typhoid, and she since prepared the food, she used to contaminate the food. Okay. And uh, uh, because of why she used to contaminate the food, probably she did not wash her hands properly and uh, uh, not maintaining the absolute hygiene and all. Because of which, she spread her disease to the people in that house, in whichever house she was working as a cook. And the moment uh, uh, that time during USA, usually poor people used to get the typhoid. But now, uh, people were observing that affluent families also are getting, I mean, rich uh, families are also getting typhoid. And therefore, a uh, moment uh, uh, people used to come to inquire and detect what happened, she used to shift her job to the next family. And that's why she kept on sh shifting, I mean, sh shifting from one family to the next affluent family. And uh, however, uh, as people again started detecting, she used to keep on shifting her uh, place where she is working. Uh, and finally, it did not take much time for Sherlock Holmes to detect it. He joined the pieces of evidence and finally found out that it was the main person who is spreading typhoid among the affluent uh, families was none other, other than the cook called Mary Mellon. Okay. So she was, to avoid spreading of typhoid, she was quarantined and uh, for a few years and later on she was advised that she would be left so that she is left from the quarantine so that she would not work as a cook anymore. Okay. So uh, she was released from the quarantine and uh, she for a few years did not work uh, as a cook and once she was out of the public memory, uh, again, after a few years, she started working as a cook because that gave her a comfortable life. So then, as she worked in hospitals and out there, also she started spreading uh, the diseases. And finally, gave her, uh, she was permanently quarantined before she would uh, die. Okay. 
So it means that here the purpose of telling all this is uh, the risk of carriers, the risk of being the carriers. So she was, she was, she was a typhoid carrier. So Mary Malone was a typhoid carrier. What are the signs? They carry the pathogens. That means carriers are those individuals who have pathogens in their body. What are pathogens? Already I have told in the previous class, they are disease causing organisms. So the body of the carrier will be heartbreak or will be carrying these pathogens. And second is, people will not find them because they do not exhibit any symptoms. So they carry the pathogens but they do not exhibit any symptoms. So these two are the nature of carriers. Okay. Similarly, carriers can be there for other diseases also. So this was about a brief note on Mary Mellon. Now next is the next bacterial disease called pneumonia. So pneumonia, whatever I'm explaining now is related to bacterial disease, but pneumonia can also be caused by virus okay and that virus is called uh, and means uh, even it can be caused by uh, the virus okay so but whatever i'm explaining now is relevant to bacterial pneumonia so pneumonia is caused by which causative agent So, causative agent for pneumonia, it is caused by bacteria itself, as I already told, these are nothing but a bacterial pneumonia. So, it is caused by streptococcus pneumonia. Caused by streptococcus pneumonia. It can also be caused by hemophilus influenzae. These are the two pathogens known to cause pneumonia. Now, how, what is the incubation period? Suppose if this pathogen enters inside the body of humans, then how much time it will take for symptoms to occur from that point of entry, from the time of point of entry to occurrence of symptoms? It will take about one to three days. That means this disease can, the symptoms of this disease can occur very fast within one to three days. So also it can spread very fast. So causative agent is streptococcus pneumoniae and another one is hemophilus influenzae. Now how is the mode of transmission or mode of infection? How it 
can spread from one individual to another. So one of the primary mode of transmission is droplet transmission. It can pass, the disease can transmit from an infected individual to normal individual through droplets, which is also called aerosols. So here we pass through aerosols. Now aerosols are minute droplets whose diameters will be in the scale of micrometers. So those minute droplets can persist in the air. They won't settle very quickly. And during that time, it can easily spread from an infected individual to uninfected healthy individual. So other means by which pneumonia can transmit is by fomite transmission. It also can get transmitted to fomite. What is fomite? Is sharing of objects. Suppose a person having pneumonia is sharing an object to other healthy person. There is a possibility that there can be transmission of this disease. So this is aerosols, you know, it is a minor droplet. So when the droplets are very high in number, especially during sneezing. Otherwise, while talking also, some amount of droplets can be released. Understand? So when the person sneezes with a high speed, okay, around 10 meters per second now, in that case, a lot of droplets are created. Okay, and those droplets will have this pathogen. And therefore, it may pass from a healthy individual to, uh, excuse me, it will pass from a uh, diseased individual to healthy individual. So what is fomite, remember? It should be through objects. Passing, passing the disease through use of common articles. Articles or objects. For example, it can be sharing pen, it can be sharing computers, uh, or the mouse or keyboard. Like that, objects can spread, objects are the means by which it is spread from a deceased individual to uh, healthy individual. So this is the mode of transmission, you can also tell you mode of infection. Then coming to, lastly, to some of its symptoms. Remember, whenever pneumonia is there, definitely the organ that is affected in pneumonia will be definitely what? Lung. And that too, specifically it is going to attack the structural and functional unit of the lungs called as alveoli. So target, that is inflammatory reactions will be occurring in the alveoli. So the, the target is, target of the lung and within the lung it is going to infect the alveoli. The infection as well as inflammatory reactions will be occurring in the alveoli. Now symptoms. Okay. So symptoms will be as you all know that since inflammatory reaction occur in this alveoli, so inflammatory reaction occurs, then there is a fluid buildup here. And if this reaction keeps on continuing, the fluid becomes more thicker and thicker and may result in pus formation. Pus formation. And therefore, what it can affect is exchange of O2 like CO2. You know that alveoli is heavily vascularized, containing various minute capillaries. So, therefore, it can affect the exchange of O2 and CO2. Because of accumulation of fluid, there is no air here, rather than there is a fluid. So, amount of oxygen reaching to this blood capillaries will be less. So, there is oxygen distribution, that means it affects the distribution of oxygen. Understand? So, that when substances are deposited like this, therefore, obviously, the symptom will be shortness of breath or it be difficulty in breathing. So, first will come as shortness of breath. Here with me. Pulmonary ventilation, that is inspiration and expiration becomes 
difficult. That is called as the shortness of breath. Good. So then, apart from this, oxygen carrying capacity is affected in pneumonia. This is a general The reason I told why the O2 and CO2 cannot easily exchange is because inside this alveoli fluid or pulses fails due to pneumonia. So there is a difficulty in breathing. Okay. Sharpness of breath. So apart from this, person can cough because cough reflex will start whenever some particles start depositing. So therefore, what person tries uh, uh, in pneumonia, person will start coughing. So, cough is one of the symptoms. Okay. Then, as the coughing continues, also comes other symptoms like chest pain. Chest pain. Then, symptoms like fever. Increase in the body temperature. Then chills, feeling cold. You were right, chills. Okay. So these are some of the symptoms of main symptoms of pneumonia. Caused by a gram positive bacteria. Mode of transmission is usually through aerosols, also through fomite. Symptoms, sharpness of the cough, chest pain, fever and chill. Part of the organ that is affected is lungs and within the lungs it is the alveoli that is getting inflammatory reactions localized in alveoli. So therefore reaction starts here in the alveoli. Because of this inflammatory reaction there is a fluid filling as well as there is pus accumulation. And here, of course, because of which one happens? O2 carry capacity. Now remember, when the blood has less oxygen, now uh, if the O2 carry capacity is affected, then the blood will carry less oxygen. And the blood that carries less oxygen will be slightly bluish. We will give you in part a bluish color. But highly oxygenate. When oxygen is maximum, then the blood color is supposed to be red. And because now the oxygen concentration is less because of inflammation in alveoli, what happens is the nails as well as lips turn blue. And it is also sometimes called cyanosis. It is also called as cyanosis. That is in case of advanced stages. So now in symptoms in advanced stages. So advanced symptom of pneumonia. Oxygen is less than 
right got and because of which first you should understand when oxygen is less the blood can become slightly which color bluish color Be and because of this it imparts bluish color for left side the nails so therefore nails here we mean nail but the nails won't be blue but usually the there is a supply of blood underneath in the nail but that is the one that is important uh, which will appear as the nails so nails and lips they turn bluish but in an advanced stages so in advanced stages nails and lips turn bluish this condition is called cyanosis so this was about this is called pneumonia which can also be called as which is caused by both bacteria as well as virus so next disease these are the two diseases explained in ncrt the next would be about the viral diseases the next disease are viral disease the type of disease that you are studying in viral disease is the common cold common cold the part of the body that is affected is the upper respiratory tract okay so you can divide the respiratory system into upper respiratory tract and lower respiratory tract the upper rep respiratory tract will be in the nasal cavity and the throat region till larynx so that is supposed to be upper respiratory tract that means this is not going to infect the lungs this is a point which you should know common cold is a disease that is not infect lungs so only it is infecting the upper respiratory tract but therefore sometimes it also called as upper respiratory tract infection okay specifically it will be starting with the nasal cavity or it will affect the nose and therefore it is also called as rhinitis nose called rhinitis so common cold is also called as rhinitis also is called upper respiratory tract infections upper respiratory tract infections now again as usual the disease symptoms and causative agents so here causative agent for common cold positive agent for common cold will be rhinovirus okay these uh, these are the group of virus that is going to infect the upper respiratory tract called rhinovirus
Now, when do symptoms occur? Suppose if today the virus enters, after how many days the symptoms can occur? That will be explained by a term called incubation period. So if the virus is going to enter today, the symptoms can appear within 24 hours also, 48 hours or 72 hours. So average of 1 to 3 days will be the even the infection of this uh, incubation period of this common cold. So therefore this will be positive agent as well as incubation period of a disease called as common cold. Now next, what are the symptoms of common cold? Symptoms include excessive nasal discharge. That means uh, in the nasal cavity, there is an excessive secretion of mucus or the nasal discharge is supposed to be there. So therefore, what happens? More and more mucus secretion. This condition is called as excessive nasal discharge. Excessive nasal discharge. This sometimes are also called it is also called running nose. Also called running nose. So if there is an excessive nasal discharge, it is obvious that the nasal passage can block. Okay. When the nasal passage can block, what occurs is congestion occurs. That means the air will not easily move in or out through the respiratory tract during pulmonary ventilation. So there is a blockage of nose, you can tell. But that is called as nasal congestion. So it's called as nasal congestion. What is nasal congestion? It is blockage in the nasal area. Nasal congestion. So I just mentioned the list of diseases, so I'm remembering it. So it's nasal discharge, uh, nasal congestion is there. The virus keeps multiplying in the nasal cavity, then it will drop back into the throat region. Then comes what? Sore throat can occur. It cannot go up till the lung. So what can occur? Once it goes to the throat region, there also it starts multiplying and brings about the symptoms relevant to throat. So therefore comes the sore throat. So when you tell there is sore, soreness is there, or when there is a, uh, what do you call it, soreness is there, then what will be meaning of it is? When we say that is, when, when, when the part of the body is sore, uh, we mean it is an outcome of inflammatory reaction. It will start, that part might start to swell. That part might become highly vascularized excuse me, rather than vascularized erythema, that is redness can occur swelling can be there, redness can be there so these all are signs that there is a sore throat, means throat has swollen or it can become red so, uh, that is the meaning of sore throat. Now then uh, slowly as the virus starts entering the sound box, it will irritate the 
in passages then the person try uh, then it is a natural lover what is adapted uh, to cough so that any foreign particle entry uh, into the air passages is expelled outside mm -hmm. so as a result cough can also be outside and of course generally symptoms like headache etc so these are some of the symptoms relevant to common cold okay and next is treatment so i'll explain how is the treatment given for whatever diseases i have taught today So treatment given bacterial diseases. I told already while explaining chapter. Bacterial diseases can be easily cured by certain chemical substance which are called as antibiotics. So here. can be cured by use of antibiotics there are many antibiotics most of them will be main purpose you should know what those antibiotics are they are chemicals that kill bacteria but not virus antibiotics are those that can kill the bacteria but not virus so now among the two diseases which of the two diseases the, there can be treatment by using antibiotics so two diseases are uh, explained today one was pneumonia another was common cold so pneumonia can be treated by pneumonia is a bacteria bacterial pneumonia that can be treated by using anti Biotics. Okay, so there are different antibiotics like streptomycin, azithromycin, gentamicin, okay, penicillin, ampicillin, like that. Many antibiotics are there. Out of that, for uh, pneumonia, the preferred antibiotic is streptomycin. So pneumonia is a bacterial disease. What? So therefore, it will be cured by antibiotics like streptomycin or even ampicillin. So they are also called bactericide that kill the bacteria. Therefore, whenever a person suffers with some bacterial diseases, always what is preferred for him is him or her is 
antibiotics. So typhoid was a bacterial disease. So the cure for typhoid will be antibiotics. Pneumonia is a bacterial disease. So cure for pneumonia also will be antibiotics. So this was about the treatment that is given for pneumonia. Next is the treatment for virus. Now you see, the same antibiotics has I mentioned that it cannot be used for a virus. So antibiotics may not be, is not referred for viral infection. Then the substance that is, uh, the substance that I used to kill the virus are antiviral drugs that interfere with uh, say protein synthesis or DNA replication etc. So they were viral disease treatment. So treatment of viral diseases. So antibiotics since they cannot be used for viral diseases, here antiviral drugs will be given. So antiviral drugs will be given for this. Virus. Now, well, how do they give common? Common cold occurs very frequently. So usually without treatment itself, it will go after seven days. But if the treatment is given, it is only based on the symptom. So it's only symptomatic treatment is given. And the preferred uh, medicines used, preferred drugs used to treat common cold will be antihistamine. So during allergies or during inflammatory reactions and all, histamine will be released with that. So in order to suppress the activity of histamine, antihistamine drugs are given. This can cure some of the symptoms of cold. That is why antihistamines are preferred. Now next is decongestant. So decongestants are those drugs given in order to uh, remove the blockage of the nose or remove the mucus. Obviously the blockage in the nasal cavity can be overcome after the removal of the mucus. And then for decongestant activities usually are mucolytic. Decongestant are having mucolytic function as mucus thinning chemical substance will be present in the decongestant. And now for common cold, therefore, two of the drugs are preferred. One is antihistamine. And another one is deep congestant.
comes to exam point of view, the causative agent symptoms and whether the disease classification, that means whether the, the given disease is a bacterial disease or viral disease and which organ does it affect. These are the points which has to be considered while revising the various diseases. So broader disease classification, then second would be symptoms, okay, then uh, causative agents. These are the points more to be concentrated upon. Then next is the other diseases, bacterial diseases and viral diseases, which are important but yet may not be mentioned in the NCRT. This is a topic, usually this topic will fall out of, outside of the NCRT. Uh, other bacterial disease, so I will be telling very list of the disease as well as this causative agents. So, other bacterial diseases. So, other bacterial diseases, first one, let me tell plague. So, plague is caused by Yersinia pestis. This bacteria causes plague. Now, plague can be spread by rat flea. Okay. That is an insect through which the uh, plague uh, bacteria can uh, transmit from a infected individual to healthy individuals. So people suffering from this disease, I'm only telling the main point of what occurs, what occurs in this particular disease. This plague is also called bubonic plague because uh, bubons will appear. Swollen structures will appear in the groin area as well as armpit area. They are called as bubons. Okay. So, bubos are formed. So, formation of bubos. But, so, this is about the, what do you call, uh, the disease called, okay, apart from this fatigue, fever or other associated symptoms. So, next is, Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is commonly called as TB. Okay. And the causative agent for TB is Mycobacterium tuberculi. This is the name of the bacteria that causes TB or tuberculosis. In TB, what happens? One of the common symptoms is cough. Usually, typically, uh, coughing occurs, and that will, will be a dry cough with the blood stained sputum. So, that is a sign of TB. So, this also bacterial inflammatory reaction occurs in advanced stains. Then, cholera. Cholera also is bacterial disease. Tuberculosis can be transmitted through the uh, what do you call it? Transmission can occur here. Uh, one more point I have wanted to tell is about the common cold. Common cold can spread again to aerosols and objects. Okay, here also. Cholera contaminated food and water like typhoid. Cholera is caused by Vibrio cholera. So this bacteria will be present in contaminated food and contaminated water. Now what is the main sign of this disease is diarrhea. Okay. So the diarrhea that is similar to uh, 
the diarrhea that is the stools are similar to rice water so that means highly fluid stools are present in cholera so person will be in diarrheal conditions is continuously uh, that we can tell in common uh, way loose motion so loose motions is in the form of rice water white is at the same time there is vomiting also so the toxins of vibrio cholera make a person to continuously vomit so both things are going there is diarrhea as well as there is vomiting because of these two there is a loss of water in the body so what occurs is dehydration occurs because of which the person is advised to take the ors or more and more uh, electrolytes has to be taken in order to prevent imbalance okay so next is diphtheria diphtheria is a disease caused by cornibacterium diphtheriae this disease will typically cause a formation of gray membrane in the throat region as well as in the even it can spread to buccal cavity it is a pseudo membrane and uh, this is a characteristic features of this diphtheria and as the disease progresses there can be narrowing down of the throat and later on difficulty in breathing and all so but you should know that there is a false grayish membrane gray membrane develops and this membrane cannot be easily uh, removed okay so this is the feature of diphtheria the next one is tetanus So this is different from one more disease, which is due to the deficiency of calcium. But this is tetanus. Tetanus is caused by Clostridium tetani. This is a bacteria. The toxins of the bacteria will ultimately cause spasms in the voluntary muscles. spasms in the voluntary muscles now spasms means what while a violent contraction of muscles very strong contraction of muscles and whenever there is a spasm there can be a pain spasms of pain so here spasms in <coughs> voluntary For example, the jaw muscles can undergo spasm. The facial muscles can undergo spasm, and it can spread to other voluntary muscles in the body. Then a point comes where difficulty can be there even in swallowing anything because of whichever functionality that includes the voluntary muscles, those all functions can be affected due to tetanus. Okay, and you know that this bacteria. its spores are highly resistant so it is supposed to be present on the soil so if there is any deep wound through that deep wound this bacteria can enter the human body so therefore people go for taking tetanus injection in order to avoid the infection and this is uh, this can bring about the disease very so it is highly pathogenic so these are some of the bacterial diseases and one other bacterial disease is like leprosy where there is deformity in the limbs and digits are so that is caused by mycobacterium leprae now list of viral diseases
viral diseases. So viral diseases, polio, polio mild resistance called. It is also called just polio. And there's a vaccine available for it. It is both the Sabin and the Salk vaccines available depending on how the vaccine is prepared. It can be called Sabin or Salk here. Polio is causing an infantile paralysis. It means that uh, infantile in the sense in the young age itself, what can occur is uh, paralysis can occur in the muscle. Uh, so most of the time it will be the legs involved in most of the then, apart from polio comes smallpox. It is also smallpox causes severe uh, skin lesions, and uh, once the lesions will heal, skin lesions mean uh, some eruptions onto the skin, defect in the skin, eruptions will occur on the skin, simple like. And uh, it will start swelling. Those are called as skin lesions. So these skin lesions, once they heal, they leave us permanent. Uh, they leave a permanent scar on the skin. That means the pits. Uh, that means for the smooth skin, a pit is left on the skin. And especially these will be more on the face region. So skin lesions followed by permanent scars left on the face region that is about the smallpox and you know that smallpox vaccine was discovered by edward jenner and he used cowpox in order to cure smallpox next step smallpox is caused by variola virus and polio is caused by polio virus Now, chicken pox is a milder form. Here also skin lesions are formed. And, uh, but the skin lesions, after the healing, they don't leave us permanent scar. And most of these lesions are formed in the trunk region rather than, it doesn't mean it does not occur at all in the face, but more they will be in the trunk region. And there is small pox more in the face region. And it is caused by varicella zoster virus that is about the chicken pox it, it also can be cured the next is hepatitis hepatitis is caused by hepatitis virus like hepatitis b hepatitis c which are sexually transmitted and sexually transmitted hepatitis is also called serum hepatitis. Okay. So in hepatitis, the consequence of what occurs is inflammation of liver occurs in case of hepatitis. So there can be an abdominal pain, dark urine and all those some of the symptoms and it will cause the hepatitis virus. It is also transmitted primarily through, it is an STD that is the hepatitis B and C. It is an STD transmitted uh, through sexual contact. The next, another STD, a common uh, viral uh, disease is AIDS. AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. And this is caused by a virus, human immunodeficiency virus. Okay. What this virus does is, it weakens the immune system of a person. Okay. That means there are other means also. It, that means uh, immune system, you know, is what about by WBCs. And WBCs you can broadly divide into granulocytes and or granulocytes. And a granulocytes. Now, a granulocytes are two types lymphocytes and 
monocytes. Now, AIDS viral, uh, AIDS viral, that is human immunodeficiency virus, is the virus name. Whereas human AIDS is a disease name. So, in AIDS, what happens? The virus will reduce the number of lymphocytes. Again, which lymphocytes? There are two lymphocytes in this again. One is B lymphocyte, also called B cells. Another is T lymphocytes also called as T cells and AIDS virus will reduce T cells. Now again T cells there are two types one is TH cells and TC cells. Now which it is going to reduce is the TH cell. AIDS virus is going to decrease pH cells. Now when pH cells will decrease, immune system of a person will become weak. And when his immune system becomes weak, he welcomes all type of pathogens to attack him. That's what occurs in AIDS. Then next to the seeds will be dengue. So dengue is caused by sometimes they can tell commonly dengue virus is actually a flabby virus. It's a group of virus, flabby virus group that will cause dengue. Now one of the dengue is of course high fever. And there is a joint pain also, and there is a pain around the eyes, at the back of the eyes. Okay, so person can feel a pain and will starts moving his eyes. More pain can be, so that will be the pain. Okay. So there is no specific treatment given. However, rest is advised, and certain supportive medications will be given here. The next is chicken gunia. Chicken gunia is nothing to do with uh, the animal's chicken, but this is uh, derived from an African word. Uh, it means that this disease explains about severe joint pain. Person who suffers uh, with the infection by this virus, this virus is called as chicken gunia virus itself, and this is supposed to uh, cause severe joint pain or crippling joint pain will be there. Okay. And this crippling joint pain, uh, because of this crippling joint pain, it is named as chicken gunia. Okay. And these two can be spread by Aedes mosquito. Aedes aegypti is the name of the mosquito that will. Uh, uh, transmit this dengue as well as chicken gunia. Whereas elephantiasis is transmitted by culex mosquito and malaria is transmitted by anopheles, female anopheles mosquito. Now, here these two, hepatitis and AIDS, they are basically transmitted primarily through sexual contact. Okay, so they are called STD, sexually transmitted diseases. The sexually transmitted diseases are also called venereal diseases. Can there be any other mode? Other mode can be blood transmission from mother to offspring, sharing of needles, highly transmitted for contagious also. Please. Okay. This can most of them can be cured. There is a vaccine for this, which is not curious. The AIDS. Uh, there is no Cure for AIDS. Whatever treatment are given so far is symptomatic treatment. And of course, these also have, they can be curable. They are not like incurable diseases. 
they are also pure. Okay. So this completes some of the additional bacterial as well as viral disease. In the next class, I continue with diseases caused by protozoa. Thank mm -hmm. you.